As the Minister of National Security from 2003 to 2010, Senator Martin Joseph was extremely passionate about bringing crime in Trinidad and Tobago under control. He adopted an integrated approach to national security that would include programs aimed at discouraging young people from a life of crime and for protecting the country's maritime borders from drug and gun smuggling and other illicit activities. His approach also involved a heavy legislative agenda that would include stricter laws imposing heavy penalties for the illegal possession and use of firearms and ammunition, as well as legislation for improving the management and crime-fighting capabilities in the police service. On the question of his efforts on behalf of young people, this is how Minister Joseph defined the objective as he addressed the Senate. To engender in young persons between the ages of 18 to 30 the value and benefits of giving back to their communities through selfless service, creating the will to serve. The program envisaged a facility that would provide young people with academic training towards attaining a full certificate of secondary education and military guided discipline. In support of his tough stance against the use and possession of illegal firearms, Minister Joseph introduced the Firearms Amendment No. 2 Bill 2003, one of the first pieces of law enforcement legislation he would bring to the Senate upon assuming his national security portfolio. This piece of legislation passed in the other place and here before us today represents just one piece of the whole puzzle designed to ensure that Trinidad and Tobago reclaims this country and take it out of the hands of a small bunch of criminals who are terrorizing this country. As he did at the beginning of his tenure as Minister of National Security, Senator Joseph Wood introduced in 2010, his last year in office, another significant piece of legislation. The bill, called the Anti-Terrorism Amendment No. 2 Bill 2010, would create the offense of terrorism financing in accordance with the International Convention for the Suppression of the Financing of Terrorism adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in December 1999. This bill set out a penalty for the offending individual of 25 years imprisonment or in the case of a legal entity a fine of two million dollars. Before demitting office Senator Joseph presided over the transformation of NEMA, the National Emergency Management Agency, into ODPM, the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management. Emphasizing that it was not merely a name change, he pointed out that under the new arrangement, the responsibilities of the ODPM would exceed the task of mitigating the impact of hazards and disasters on the population, the environment, and the economy. The new body would also be responsible for leading the national effort in protecting public health and safety and provide a key role for the engineering battalion of the Defense Force in national emergency situations. In relation to the immigration aspect of his portfolio, Senator Joseph was responsible for the introduction of machine readable passports in this country and got the Parliament to pass the Immigration Amendment Bill 2006 to make provision for the transmission of advanced passenger information pertaining to persons traveling to Trinidad and Tobago. When Martin Joseph took up his challenging portfolio of national security, kidnappings for ransom dominated a worrying segment of criminal activity. And even while he was publicly lambasted and pilloried for the soaring rate of crime generally, he resolutely went about his passion, achieving remarkable success in making kidnappings an aberration of the past. His good friend and former cabinet and Senate colleague Mariano Brown is of the view that the bad press Mr. Joseph suffered as Minister of National Security was largely because he was widely misunderstood. Not many people understood that our help in terms of solving the, the, the whole concept of, uh, of, of, of kidnapping didn't come from North America, it came from Colombia. And it came from Colombian resources and, and understanding what they did, how they did it, what were the mechanisms, uh, how it worked, 
and transferring that to Trinidad and Tobago. Now, he was, that was one of the areas in which he was very successful. What he was doing wasn't understood, and I don't think the country, I think now that we've had several ministers of national security, and the fact that it hasn't changed, everybody thought it was him and he wasn't being forceful enough, that he wasn't doing the right things and so on. The, the real issue about improving national security and improving, for example, the institutions called the police force and the defense, defense force and so on, really was about um, people development. And that's where his forte as a human resource manager comes about. Martin Joseph drowned in Grange Bay, Tobago on January 5, 2015. He was 65. Up to the time we spoke with her at her Flagstaff Hill apartment in Marval, Claire Joseph, wife of Mr. Joseph, pointed out that more than one year later, she and her daughter Gabby, now 11, are still trying to come to terms with the tragedy. I mean, I know he's dead, but I'm still trying to figure out why or how. Well, I mean, I, mean, I know how, but why? I mean, that's still the question, you know. But as I told people already, I, you know, that was one thing in, in in our whole scenario, all the things that we might have been through as a family and whatever, I never, it was something I was never prepared for. And not just drowning, just death on the whole with him. I, I, and he always used to say he would live to be at least 80, you know, to make sure Gabby gets to college and so. Mariano Brown recalls his unenviable task of having to relay the sad news to Mrs. Joseph. I got a telephone call about 7.30 in the morning and my job was to call his wife and tell him, uh, tell her what the developments were. Um, that was not the most pleasant experience I had. And I could tell you that when I first got the telephone call, I didn't believe that that had happened. I had to ask him to repeat it about three or four times. Because he left here, hmm, New Year's Day, New Year's morning he left. And left, told Gabby and I, well, we were both still sort of in bed. And he kissed us and was by, he would call us. And up to the Sunday night, Gabby spoke with him because she was starting school on the Wednesday of that week. So he was coming back the Tuesday. And up to the Sunday, she spoke with him. And then Monday morning, I'm outside drinking coffee, saying my prayers. And I was on the phone, I think, to my eldest sister. And then I heard a beep on the line. And I pressed down because I told my sister, well, I'll call you back press down and then it was Mariana Brown telling me um, that Andrew was trying to get on to me. So I said, well, no, I didn't get any call. And then he proceeds to tell me that, um, where's Martin? I said, well, he in Tobago, he's coming back tomorrow. And then he said, well, you know, I have some news for you. And not... So I said, well, what news about Martin? So, and then he says that, um, he think Martin drunk because Andre told him that um, they're now looking for him. They went out. At, I mean, and I, I, I don't know. Martin Joseph and Mariano Brown shared a close personal relationship as government ministers and senators. Coming from a background in personal management, Mr. Joseph was the elected member of parliament for the St. Anne's East constituency from 1995 to 2002. His appointment as a cabinet minister began in 2001 when he was appointed Minister of Public Utilities and the Environment. In October 2002, Mr. Joseph was made a government senator and was given the portfolio of Minister of Housing, an appointment he held until November 2003 when he started his seven year long tenure as National Security Minister. In 2009, Martin Joseph and Mariano Brown found themselves having to collaborate even more closely with each other as they both worked on the organizing committee for hosting the Fifth Summit of the Americas and the Commonwealth Heads of Government Conferences in Port of Spain. I was the chairman of the committee and he essentially would have been responsible for all those issues of national security and national security policy. And given the fact that we were inviting, in the case of the Fifth Summit of the Americas, 34 heads of state, and in the case of the, um, the Commonwealth heads of government, more than 50, 53 heads of state, there were very serious issues in terms of 
security issues and procedures and so on, which had to be developed and how he had to deploy uh, his team, both, of the, um, both in terms of the Trinidad and Rico Defense Force, the Coast Guard, as well as the Air Guard. Right? So he brought all those, um, if you want, forces together. There were representatives there, but at the same token, he was responsible for coordinating the effort. Mr. Brown recalls Martin Joseph as being very methodical, structured and determined to give of his best to any task he was required to perform, whether it was in his role as General Secretary of the PNM, organizing an election campaign for the party, or dealing with the challenging issues of national security. It is a point that is fervently acknowledged by another friend and colleague of Martin Joseph, Anthony Roberts. Chairman of the San Juan Laventil Regional Corporation and also a former member of Parliament for St. Anne's East. Mr. Robert said Martin Joseph simply luxuriated in the challenge that winning an election at national level presented and he had a formidable success rating. I don't know if he was encouraged by his success, but Martin actually gave up a safe seat in St. Anne's East to go to Mayaro to be the campaign manager of Franklin Gun. Alright, and that is where I gave it. Alright, he actually gave up the seat because he wanted to ensure that the PNM overall was successful in the election. And it was necessary to win the mayoral seat. Alright, and the mayoral seat was a difficult seat. Alright, but because of Martin's strategic approach to the elections. He knew exactly how many um, votes he would require to win and he very, very structured in his approach. And he was able to have Franklin can become very successful at that, at that election. And is Anthony Roberts also of the opinion that in his initiatives as Minister of National Security, the bad press Martin Joseph received had been unfair? Yes, certainly, certainly, certainly. Um, but he was not that thin-skinned, he was very thick. And, uh, uh, while as a human being, and I would tell you, it would have bothered you because I spent some time working with him in the Ministry of National Security, it would bother you as a human being, but he knew that all he had to do was to press on. Before taking up active politics, Martin Joseph served in senior management positions with the American tax consultancy firm S&J Associates in West Virginia, USA, and with the Trinidad and Tobago National Insurance Board in Port of Spain. Mr. Joseph was also a member of the Human Resource Management Association of Trinidad and Tobago, the Industrial Relations Research Association of the USA, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, and the Privileges Committee of Parliament.